Uh, our next talk is um, accelerating the communication cost of parallel 3D FFTs. And uh, we have two speakers for this particular talk, uh, Stan Tomov and Aylan Ayala. So uh, Stan received an MS degree in computer science from Sofia University, Bulgaria, and PhD in mathematics from Texas A&M. He's a research director in ICL and research assistant professor in the double ECS department at um, UPK. Um, Tomo's research interests are in parallel algorithms, numerical analysis, and high performance scientific computing. Uh, currently, his work is concentrated on the development of numerical linear algebra software and, in particular, Magma for emerging architectures for HPC and he FFTE for FFT distributed computations. Um, and also we have Alan Ayla, who's received his MS degree in applied mathematics from Piara at Mary University and a PhD from Sorbonne University and Indria, Paris. Um, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing these correctly. Um, he's a research associate at ICL at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Dr. Ella's research focuses on the development of the FFT library for FFT computation on upcoming exascale systems and FFT benchmarking software initiative. So with this, I hand it over to uh, Stan and Alan. Thank you, Amir, for the introduction. Uh, and thank you for the uh, invitation. Uh, let's see if I can. Like this. Okay. Uh, does everybody yes. see the slide? Yes, looks good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Stan Tomov. Uh, I enjoyed the meeting uh, so far. So, uh, and uh, in this talk, uh, we will see an application that actually heavily relies on uh, MPI. So, uh, as we were introduced, uh, the main work at ICL, actually ICL is well known in HPC and uh, high performance numerical linear algebra libraries like uh, LAPEX, ScalarPath, Magma, and, and Slate uh, recently. So this is in Jack Dungara's group. Uh, in all these uh, density algebra libraries, usually we try to design the algorithms to avoid communications. Uh, but actually here in this project, uh, the FFT, we will see that uh, actually most of the time is spent on communication, like 99%. Uh, so uh, optimizing MPI communications uh, for these type of applications is uh, extremely important. And uh, uh, I will uh, present this uh, with Alan, uh, and we will switch somewhere in the middle. This is also joint work with Miroslav Stoyanov. He's uh, at uh, uh, Oak Ridge National Lab. Uh, Azam Haidar is also a collaborator. He's uh, from NVIDIA and uh, Jack Dungara. So this is the outline. I will start first uh, in general to introduce the uh, fast Fourier transform uh, and then talk about FFT on large scale systems and then Alan would show the current performance results, uh, future work and conclusions. Starting with the FFT, so this is uh, 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 the definition to formally introduce the, what the FFT computation is doing. So, and this is a multi-dimensional FFT, let's say in M dimensions. And as you can see for each uh, uh, of these uh, uh, directions, uh, we have this sum that fully couples uh, uh, the vector of unknowns uh, uh, with the coefficients in the Fourier matrix. So you can think of this as a dense matrix vector product in a particular direction, for example. So, and the coefficients here are multiplied uh, uh, with these frequencies of sines and cosines. So, so it is fully coupled, uh, leads to uh, uh, computation that is, uh, has dependencies like everyone to everyone, and this naturally leads uh, later to 
communications. Uh, uh, so this is the definition, uh, but then also if it's done with the fast Fourier transform, actually you would not do these matrix vector multiplications in n square time, but uh, one can do them in n log n time. So that's uh, the nice thing about the uh, fast Fourier transform. So uh, the computation gets to be extremely fast, uh, uh, doing very little flops, uh, but then this uh, again brings burden on the communication because uh, uh, really every value has to be multiplied with uh, these different frequencies uh, from the FFT matrix. And this is used in uh, many applications. So these are just some of them. Uh, this is part of the ECP uh, uh, project, DOE funded, uh, that has been going on for several years. Uh, so FFT, as I mentioned, it extremely fast and it is used uh, in general to solve PDEs very fast. There is no match to the FFT uh, when it comes to uh, solving uh, PDEs in particular settings, which indeed actually occur in many important applications. Like uh, we list some of these hack, uh, uh, hack here, for example, cosmology, uh, exalt molecular dynamics. Uh, COPPA is a co-design center for particle simulations. Uh, LAMPS uh, also, uh, we heard about LAMPS uh, experiments uh, here in the, um, in the conference. So there are many cases, and usually, as I said, they result in uh, solving PDEs fast. Uh, talking about the FFTs, the first step and requirement to have them uh, fast is to look at the uh, one-dimensional FFT. So uh, since it's very important, there has been a lot of FFT libraries. Uh, some are listed here, uh, and these do, just one dimensional FFTs, usually vendor libraries, they would always provide uh, very high performance uh, FFT implementations like QFFT, uh, uh, ROC FFT for AMD GPUs, uh, and things like that. So that's a complete list uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, tested, uh, some of the most well known. And uh, of course, with some marks uh, of uh, whether they provide GPU support. So uh, some are just for CPUs, for example. Now GPUs are of interest. Uh, most are open source, as you can see here. Uh, some support 2D and 3D FFTs and so on. Uh, so what is the uh, multidimensional FFT? This is uh, illustrated in this graph here. So uh, the user would give a computational domain, uh, maybe something like this, uh, split into uh, uh, subdomains uh, across the processors. And after that, to compute the uh, multidimensional FFT, we will need each processor to have a continuous, a continuous set of uh, uh, vectors in particular direction. So. First, we will uh, transpose this data into something like this, uh, where a certain processor would hold uh, the vectors, uh, a particular set of vectors in the X direction, just like shown here, and the others also. And then they will do in parallel a 1D FFTs on the vectors that they have in that particular direction. After that, there will be another data transposition for the uh, y and z directions. And uh, similarly, uh, every uh, MPI process would compute the one dimensional FFTs in, in that direction, and so on if there are more than three directions. And finally, uh, we will uh, do a reshape, uh, sending the data back either to the original uh, configuration or something that the user may want or specify. So this is, in other words, uh, uh, just what I described in uh, words. Uh, so basically the main components is to have flexibility in the input and output, then to uh, have uh, a way to distribute the data in these ways. Also to minimize, for example, some uh, the surface area of these uh, blocks when uh, uh, one creates the grids. 
choose the proper algorithms and for the one the FFT is to do uh, well, whatever is available uh, best performant uh, one the FFTs. Uh, uh, schematically, also one can uh, look at this uh, computation in the following way. So uh, at this stage, uh, uh, when we have to move to another configuration, uh, one would pack the data so that it's in continuous uh, way ready for MPI to send it very efficiently. So there would be a pack, then there would be MPI transfer the receiving end would unpack the data and put it into the best data layout that it needs it for fast computation of the 1D FFTs. And then there would be 1D FFT computation. And then uh, this would be cycled uh, with the other dimensions. Uh, so this is again, uh, 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 schematically giving this uh, uh, for distributed FFT. Again, we have the input and then there are different choices here. Actually, these choices are very important. Uh, how we parallelize this computation, this is very important for performance. So we support as many options as possible. For example, uh, 1D uh, uh, decomposition. These are so-called slabs in FFT terminology or these vectors, uh, uh, people call them pencils in FFT uh, terminology. Uh, one can uh, uh, split into pencils. And then there is a, a brick distribution also that it goes intermediate through the brick and then sends it uh, uh, back to pencils. This also has benefits in certain uh, uh, situations. So. Uh, basically, to have a high performance library, it's good that uh, one supports all these options because no single option is uh, best for all cases. So uh, we support as many cases and uh, as many parametrizations as possible in terms of uh, algorithm. But again, indeed, uh, at the end, it ends up uh, that the MPI is uh, the most uh, uh, time consuming part of the whole computation. Uh, this is a list of uh, distributed FFT libraries. So uh, all these distributed FFT libraries follow the same uh, kind of principle that uh, I described. They just uh, uh, distribute in certain 1D uh, configurations. They split the domain and then uh, each process is doing uh, 1D FFTs on that dimension. Uh, so again, there are many distributed libraries. Uh, we have selected some of these, benchmarked them, uh, and list uh, some of uh, the support that they provide. Uh, so not all of them provide all these decompositions. The some are uh, developed ad hoc in particular applications. They are linked to particular applications and tuned for that application. So maybe they just didn't need all those options. Uh, but here is the hefty library, the one that uh, we develop and uh, uh, we are presenting now. So um, uh, we try to support all these options and to make the library ready for exascale systems. Uh, uh, this is a slide showing uh, what kind of MPI functionalities uh, all these libraries use. So as you can see, uh, they can organize the computation with point-to-point -point, uh, uh, data exchanges, could be blocking or non-blocking. Uh, uh, but also uh, many of them provide options to do it uh, with collective uh, uh, communication, so blocking or non-blocking. And uh, usually here, these are done on uh, sub-communicators, uh, results in MPI all to all V uh, type of routines. And these are the ones very important for us uh, uh, to have uh, a high performance and to reach a high percentage of the theoretical uh, bandwidth peak. Uh, so, so as I said, there are many libraries and then there is an interest 
uh, to test all these libraries. So uh, we introduced actually a FFT benchmark. Uh, uh, this is uh, also part of the FFT work and ICL is also very strong in proposing various uh, benchmarks for HPC. So in this case, uh, uh, we propose these benchmarks for FFT and actually wrote this interim report uh, comparing the current uh, FFT libraries that uh, we saw before. Uh, uh, but in this case, uh, Alan will show some more results on the performance, but in this case, they are just uh, tested on the Summit uh, supercomputer at Oak Ridge. Of course, as more exascale systems come up available, of interest would be to uh, compare on those different systems and also use different uh, uh, MPI implementations. So uh, currently we just use the spectrum on, uh, on, uh, on the Summit supercomputer. Uh, so going uh, some specific to the FFT library, I have to speed up. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the software stack. So uh, it relies on vendor or 1D FFT libraries. Uh, then uh, is the hefty framework, and then we support a number of, uh, of applications. Uh, and I already went through some of these. This is just to show how these are defined in the hefty API. So uh, usually one would have to set the process grid and then the ability to uh, go through different uh, uh, grids as we do those different types of communication and computation in the different uh, uh, directions. So uh, basically uh, we have this uh, 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 box 3D uh, C++ object that the uh, user would define uh, these grids as these objects so it could be it should be defined for the input definitely and for the output. And then intermediately, uh, we will do our best choice of configurations and move between them, but that's what the user would have to uh, give definitely at the beginning. After that, uh, uh, usually all FFTs uh, create a plan how they would do the computations internally. They would get those in boxes and out of boxes for the input and output domain, plus other options that the user may have. And then there would be the uh, FFT itself, forward or backward. And then we provide some other functionalities for tracing, for example, to, uh, to see how the execution went. Uh, the experimental setup, uh, we are interested uh, for now in the Summit supercomputer, but uh, there are other ECP uh, systems coming up. Uh, for now, uh, that's the setup that uh, Alan will present most of the results. So uh, that's a Summit supercomputer. It has six uh, NVIDIA V100 GPUs and two uh, Power9 IBM uh, 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 core uh, uh, processors. Uh, and these are on two sockets and it has two InfiniBand, so uh, total it's uh, 25 uh, uh, gigabyte per second uh, in one direction. So uh, usually we try to see uh, getting the peak of this to the nodal bandwidth. And with this, I will switch to Alan to talk more about the experiments and the results. Alan? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank uh, you. you I, I will share want, my screen. Do you want to share? Okay, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, that'll be much easier, I think. Right, thank you again to organizers for mm -hmm. the invitation to present our work. I'm going to present some experiments to follow up on what uh, Stan was presenting on the theory and background on FFTs. So we have been performing benchmarks and experiments on large FFTs that would be useful on applications such as molecular dynamics. Here you can see one of the cases that we analyze. And Um, we might have there lost we, Alan. 
Hello. Um, I can hear you now, Alan. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. We lost you for a little bit, and can you please make your uh, slide full screen? Using it full screen. Uh, is it full screen now? Um, no, I see the header as well, right? Home tools on the left hand side tabs. Okay. Let me share the whole screen. Maybe that will help. I think it's okay. We can continue. What about now? Yes, it's good. Okay. So as I was mentioning here, uh, we had a uh, over 50% using CPU distributed with the libraries, like a 50 MPI. We need to optimize communication. Then we have been dealing with that since then. You can see the local kernels have been having speed up over 40 times on the GPUs. And now we just have to lead with the communication bottleneck. Uh, to deal with that, some of the techniques we're using is parameterization tuning. Here, for instance, we choose between the algorithms that Stan was mentioning. We can go via slab decomposition or pencil decomposition. And that can help to the scalability here, as you can see on the right. For single and double precision, if you, if you switch between slabs or pencils, you can get some speed up. And how do you choose that? any of these algorithms. Uh, we provide some phase diagrams to help users on that. And they can just input the MPI processors and the FFT size and they get an answer. Here, uh, in a schematical way, I can show how the scalability at some point, this is strong scalability here up to 1,000 nodes, 6,000 GPUs. You can see that at the end, we stop scaling, we stop the linear scaling. So we plotted here on the right what's happening with the communication, which is leading cost on the runtime. Um, there is a lot of variability here. These messages for this part get very small, and the MPI distribution failed to provide a very good um, performance there, exchanging these messages in an all-to-all -all or point-to-point -point fashion. Both of them failed. So here you can see on the left, uh, there is a number of messages that is being exchanged on the FFT 3D parallel. Um, this grows exponentially, the number of messages uh, when you increase your number of resources. And that's, that causes some latency issues that we were exploring. We, we developed some communication models. Um, but at the end, everything relies on what can we improve on the MPI side. And that's why we have been exchanging with open MPI people, or MPI people, and IBM people. And this is the latest benchmark we have here. We're using a Spectrum 10.3 and MPI pitch, as well as open MPI UCX. We see that that was a very good thing that we discovered that with MPI pitch GDR, we can get a very good bandwidth for small sizes, which is very useful for applications that require that, like Gromax. Gromax requires small size FFTs. So we can exchange between these distributions depending on the problem that we are trying to solve. And indeed, we have a plot here. Maybe it's not very uh, visual here to see the difference between these three libraries. It's on the same scale. But uh, for small sizes, MBI pitch is the one that performs better over these three, but has a little bit more variability on their data. This is 40 experiments than the other ones. The variability here is a little bit more, and at the end, all of them performs pretty much the same. I can show the average of this. When we do that in average, first to up to 192 GPUs, and then from 199 to 6,000 GPUs, the beginning, as I was mentioning, MBI pitch is the one that uh, performs better. Here, uh, the performance improvement is around 10 to 20% faster than the Spectrum 10.3. And then uh, when we increase the number of nodes, it's already on the order of the thousands. We see no much difference between MBI pitch and Spectrum MPI. 
And at the end, all of them fail to give us uh, linear scaling. That's because of the measures of size, which become very small. On strong scalability, we see this problem. On weak scalability, we don't see it much. Depends on the number of resources compared with the size of the FFT. As I was, as I was mentioning, this improvement on 20, in some cases, it even gets to 30% improvement for small sizes was very good for us because application people was requiring us to, to get some speed ups. And for large nodes, there is not much difference. Here as a complement, we can see that all libraries that Stan was presenting on the benchmark initiative that we have been working on, we have uh, over 12 libraries that we are benchmarking. And all of them have this problem because all of them rely on standard distributions like OpenMPI or MBI pitch to handle this exchange. This exchange that can be just summarized as a tensor transposition in parallel. All of them have this scaling problem at some point. Here, FFTW, they only have the slab decomposition, so they fail earlier. But all of them, including FT, uh, fail at the end. Uh, when the sizes of the messages that you have to exchange in an all-to-all -all B fashion already uh, breaks the scaling. And that happens also for the GPU libraries. Here we have some of them, FFTE, FFT. And I put here two versions of FT, the P2P, point-to-point, -point, and all-to-all. -all. As you can see here, uh, the point-to-point fails the on linear scaling earlier. But then uh, on Hefty, we have a parametric switching of, uh, we can tune between these uh, communication options. We have, uh, currently we have three uh, types of MPI exchange that we can use on Hefty. And that can still gives you some uh, better performance than standard libraries. Right now, there is not much in the literature, but these three are the main libraries on hybrid GPU. Uh, so conclusion, we have presented uh, performance results. We have uh, analyzed some of the state of the art libraries. We presented how this FFT is impacted by the communication bottleneck at large scale, which is a very known phenomenon. And how are we handling this by parametric tuning and also by, by switching on MPI distributions, we still are collaborating with uh, different vendors, different uh, developers. And there is also some effort called OpenMPIX on the ECP project, which they are trying to, to get us better performance. But still, we haven't seen much improvement so far. And this is just due to how MPI handled very small chunks of data. We hopefully going to get some auto-tuning technique in the upcoming months that these uh, communication issues can be optimized automatically. And that's it for us. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, um, Stan and Alan. I think this was an excellent talk. So I think um, this is uh, FFT people throwing a challenge to MPI people, right? Yeah. Yes. I think this is, um, um, you know, uh, I think we are very glad that you presented this. Um, and I'm sure we can, you know, collaborate and come up with some solutions. Um, so we do have a bunch of questions. So um, Kaushik, do you want to go first, please? Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, in one of the early slides, you show that you packed uh, and then you do all to all, right? like uh, after the decomposition, uh, before the data exchange. So do you think uh, you can use MPI derived data types to avoid uh, packing, like uh, an implementation that uh, avoids packing because MPI direct data types internally, it does both packing and other type of uh, schemes. Yeah, yeah, I think it's clear the question. Uh, Alan, uh, I'll try to answer. Uh, so we have seen, people have indeed suggested this, uh, at least when GPUs are involved, uh, we can use the GPU's high bandwidth to do this uh, very fast and as the data shows that Alan was showing, uh, we accelerate every local computation and data reshuffle like 40 times. So uh, this work becomes almost zero. Uh, so we, we think at least when GPUs are involved, uh, uh, we would not get uh, any possible speed up if, if we let uh, MPI do that. 
because it would still involve uh, certain GPU specific kernels, uh, how to, to move this data very fast. Uh, so at best they would, uh, the approach would probably give the same speed even with high performance implementation, but uh, at least yeah, it's not a bottleneck uh, uh, right now for us. Yes, and indeed we are working on uh, replacing this packing by using MPI all to all W, which is available on MPI pitch, which can remove this process of packing and packing and leave it to the MPI via defining data tabs, but we still haven't uh, gotten some performance experiments. There's some libraries like FFTE that is doing some effort on that. Um, but as Stan was mentioning, this won't give us much benefit because the packing, if you compare on the runtime, is less than 1%. So even if we don't count this cost, it, won't, it doesn't have much optimizing it. Yeah, we will benchmark it on the GPUs, but we haven't done that yet, but we will. And we can quantify these statements. <laughs> okay, and um, so it seems that um, for FFTE, important MPI functions are all to all V and all reduce. These are the collective ones. And then you're also relying on I send and I receive non-blocking point-to-point -point communication. But I also saw on your slide, there was something called FFTE all to all V. Maybe that was a custom version of um, yes. that you, you have developed. So can you talk more about that? Yeah, that's the version we implemented back in 2019 using uh, CUDA memory handles to okay. try to communicate using as much as possible the, the PCI on Summit, as much efficiency as we could. We got some speed up over OpenMPI. Open uh, we, we published a paper on that uh, using this um, new technique, but it was not scaling much. Uh, as, uh, after 32 nodes, it, it didn't show any much benefit. So, but for small okay. sizes, it was, it was good. Okay, okay. Um, so I would like to thank you once again, and I would request that, um, so um, some of the results presented here are published in a report, I understand, right? Uh, yes. Can you please uh, post a link of that report on the Slack channel or um, the chat here, I can put it on the Slack. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, we will do that and answer more questions if they are in the Slack, uh, I'll open Slack now. Right. So, and we do have some more questions. Um, so I, I will take these questions and put them on Slack. So I would appreciate if you can, you know, continue this discussion on Slack, please. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you. Yeah, so, we will be these questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So I will move on to the next talk and our last speaker.